everyone, I'm finally back with my Neo Parasol tutorial. I'm going to show you how I made my parasol for my Neo Neapolitan cosplay from Ruby. It's actually a really simple concept and I did this in I think like less than a week right before the con so uh, it's not easy, not hard, but it's simple. You'll be able to do it. I absolutely love cosplaying Neo. She's one of my favorite cosplays so far and I will show you how to do her parasol so you can do her too. Alright, let's get to it. So first you'll need your supplies. You'll need your pattern, which I'll show you how to do. And you'll need an umbrella. You'll also need your fabric, of which I use just like a simple floral lace in gray, white, and pink. My umbrella is really simple. It's like a regular rain umbrella and I got it from Walmart for like $5. Note that you need the curved handle and the tip of the umbrella was actually really perfect because that's the shape of her parasol and it's actually wood uh, ends which are allowed at cons. You're not allowed to have metal props in a con. So to make your pattern what you're going to do is open up your umbrella and get a whole bunch of paper, tape them together and trace out one of the triangles. And usually all umbrellas will have eight triangles going all the way around. And then depending on the size of the umbrella that you have, the bottom halves I drew where the gray and the white are going to end, it's usually about one third of the bottom. So here's a little diagram I drew so you can figure out where you're going to put your pattern on the fabric so you know how much fabric to buy. Remember that you're going to draw out eight triangles for this pattern. So what I figured out when I started cutting out fabric was that one layer of the lace wasn't enough. You couldn't really see the color that well. So what I did was fold it over or like when you get fabric it's already folded over and just put your pattern on top there and it'll have two layers. And you'll see the color better, it does a better job as a parasol when it comes to shading you from the sun. So pin down your fabric, make sure it's all completely flat, and I'm going to trace out the top triangle, so up to that first line over there. Cut it out and make sure that you leave uh, like half an inch to an inch of extra allowance around the trace line. Repeat seven more times so that you'll have eight pairs of the pink lace in total. Now for the white lace, you're going to do the exact same thing, the top triangle down to that second line. So the white layer is just going to be a little bit longer than the pink layer. And you're going to cut the white layer just like how you cut the pink layer. Make sure you leave an extra inch of allowance along the edge of the line that you traced. And make sure that you are cutting out double, double layers of the fabric or else it's not going to show as well. And of course you're going to have eight pairs of the white lace as well. Now for the gray layer, you're going to do the same thing as you did for the pink and the white. You're going to have the two pieces of fabric together so that the color is more clear. But you're only going to use the bottom shape of the triangle. It's not even going to be the whole triangle. So make a pile of all your fabric, make sure you have enough for all of your layers, all of the gray, the white, and the pink. So now to layer all of the pink, white, and gray, what you're going to do is put the pink first, and then you're going to put the white on top of the pink, and then you're going to put the gray at the bottom. Pin the gray layer to the white layer and then pin all of the layers together all around the edge. Turn your fabric over and you're going to pin the pink to the white at the bottom where they meet. Um, the bottom of the pink layer, I know that there's an allowance around all of the edge. It's up to you if you want to keep that. What I actually did was cut off the allowance that was at the bottom of the triangle and I zigzag stitched across the bottom line. If you wanted to be on the safe side and keep the allowance, what you're going to do is fold it under and then pin it and you're going to sew the pink to the white when it's folded over. That way there's less of a chance that it's going to fray but with the zigzag stitch it's good enough and it hasn't frayed on me yet. 
So what you're going to do is use the zigzag stitch on your sewing machine for anywhere that you're sewing on the pattern just to make sure that it doesn't fray. So you're going to sew across the line where the gray meets the white, where the pink meets the white, and then all around the edge of the triangle, the outer side of the triangle. And obviously do that for eight of your triangles. So here are all of my sewn out pieces. They have all been cut out, sewn together, and I have eight in total. So I'm just making sure that they're all done right and they're all the same shape so that when I piece them all together, they're gonna fit together. Now that all my pieces are together and done, I'm going to arrange them like a pizza, pretty much. And you're going to do this with the wrong side facing up. So like you can tell with the gray and the white where they're sewn together, like the edge is kind of like sticking up off of the fabric. That part is going to be facing towards the ceiling. You're gonna be putting all of the layers onto the floor in like a pizza fashion or a pie fashion. I don't know, wh whatever you want it to be. <laughs> and don't forget to cut off all the extra pieces of thread from when you were sewing. Otherwise, after you put it all together, you know you're gonna miss a few and then when you're taking pictures, you're gonna be like, oh, there's that thread, I didn't cut that off. So do it now, you don't have to worry about it later. Now you're gonna take all of the pieces and pin them all together next to the piece that they are next to. So it's gonna be one big octagon. Go ahead and sew along the lines of where you just pinned and make sure that you'll have the little hole in the center of the octagon. That's where the tip of the umbrella is gonna go. Now I'm gonna trim just like a little bit of the excess lace that's sticking off of the umbrella or the parasol everywhere where I sewed so that there's no like flapping fabric and it just looks excessive. It's up to you if you wanted to use the scalloped edge of the lace when you buy it, it, that's how it comes for the edge of the parasol, but I wanted to stay true to Neo's parasol, so what I'm going to do is at the edge, I'm going to fold it over, pin it down, and then sew it, like normally, just so you can hem the edge and it won't fray. Now to take apart the umbrella, you're just going to cut off the umbrella fabric pretty much. There's little threads that are keeping it sewn to the frame of the umbrella. You're just gonna snip off the threads and pull it off pretty much. My umbrella has little wooden tips at the ends of the umbrella, so I collected all of those. They weren't glued on or anything, so that was easy. And I'm going to paint them later and then stick them back on so that I can sew the lace parasol to the frame of the umbrella. The top of the umbrella was the hardest part because it's actually sewn underneath the wooden tip. So I just literally cut it off, I'm not trying to make it look neat or anything because the lace is going to go on top of it anyway. Now we're going to paint the tip of the umbrella and the handle of the umbrella and I'm going to use painter's tape and paper just to protect the inner frame of the umbrella so it doesn't get any paint on it. The tip of the umbrella is going to be a bright pink. I used like this hot pink that I found in Michaels um, and just use regular spray paint. But before you do this, which I forgot to do, is get some sandpaper and actually sand down everywhere where you're going to paint. That way the paint will stick better. I forgot to do that and it's kind of chipping off now, but what I'm going to do is just paint it again and put some Mod Podge on top, of which you can also do even if you do sand sandpaper and it'll seal the paint and it won't chip off. 
Now for the handle, it's going to be black, so same thing as the tip, just use spray paint and paint the entire handle, and also the little end pieces for the umbrella are going to be black as well, so I put them in like a little piece of paper, or if you have like a paper plate or something, put them all in there, spray them, and then like move them around a little bit when they're dry, and then spray them again so you get all sides of them. Back to the lace, what you're going to do is trace all of the frilly, floral, decorative fleur-de-lis that's all around the edge of her parasol. And I used a brown fabric marker. You can use like a maroon also, but I kind of like the brown and how it came out on the lace. And you're going to pretty much just eyeball it. Trace it out with pencil or a really light marker, just in case if you mess up. And trace it out with the fabric marker. I kind of can't help you with this part. You're going to have to eyeball it. Just make sure that you have a picture of her parasol and sketch it out. You know like the square grid drawing things that you had as a child to kind of help you learn how to proportionate things? I kind of use that with the triangles. Use the triangles and just draw whatever is in that one triangle. It'll help. And that is it for the lace. That is pretty much all done. And what we're going to do is take all of our finished lace parasol and attach it to the frame of the umbrella. So I took all of the little wooden end pieces that I already painted black and put them back at the ends of the umbrella. I'm gonna glue it on later, but right now I'm just sticking them all on there. Put the lace onto the umbrella frame and it's okay if it's loose. You're going to take the points of the octagon and hand sew it to each end of the umbrella. Obviously do that for every single point. So it'll be eight corners that you need to sew in. Now we're going to glue the tips together where all of the little wooden end pieces were. They're not going to stay on by themselves, so I had to put like a very small drop of this glue because it's really strong and glue it to the end so that they won't pop off. And it's easier to do this with the umbrella open, so just a pointer. Now for the top of the umbrella, you're going to gather all of the lace around the edge and you're just going to hot glue it all together. There was a little bit of plastic at the bottom of the wooden tip. I'm guessing that's there for like when it actually rains because it was an actual umbrella for like better protection from water. So I left that, I didn't cut that off and I glued the lace to that instead. It actually worked out great. To keep the parasol together while traveling, I have an extra piece of the pink lace that I just tie around the umbrella. It's just easier. And that is pretty much it. Before you go taking it out, make sure all your paint is dry, make sure the glue is dry, but there it is. I hope you all liked this tutorial. I hope it was very helpful for all of you. If you have any other questions, if I like skipped on something where I wasn't clear on anything, uh, just let me know, comment below, and I'll answer your questions. I'm here to help. I absolutely love, love cosplaying Neo, so I am going to be doing her a lot more often and many, many more times. So look forward to those. Um, you can follow my Instagram. I have a lot more pictures there from photo shoots that I've done with her already and a little bit better pictures of the umbrella of the Empire Soul if you want to see them. The link to my Instagram is going to be in the bio below. Uh, username is Kiradessa, same as my channel here on YouTube, same as anywhere. Any of my social media is all Kiradessa. And that is pretty much it. Again, if you have any other questions, I also answer them on my Instagram as well. Um, if you want to support me, I have a coffee account and also an Etsy account where I sell things. So for you get cute things and I get the funds to do more of my cosplay and crafts. So if you support me on there, it is greatly appreciated and I love you all. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye!